Hey, so I just got back from Overland Expo PNW in Redmond, Oregon. Now you might have seen the other day I dropped a video about 270 degree awnings because I'm looking for one to put on my truck. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description below. It was really, really hot at Expo PNW this year. And those of you who have followed my channel for a while know that I'm a total pansy in the heat. So I really limited my filming at Expo PNW to like 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. In any case, I wasn't there so much to film content as to bring the truck into the Asphere 4x4 booth. But since I did want to look at awnings, I ran around and filmed those. Since I was only filming for about two to three hours a day, that actually took Friday and Saturday. Sunday morning, I went around and just kind of looked at everything else, uh, just saw what caught my eye, and uh, did a little bit of filming of a few products that I thought were interesting. So I'm gonna talk to you about them. Uh, since I just got back into town, I need to catch up on some errands, so why don't you come with me? So one other thing I was keeping my eyes open for was a propane fire pit. Here uh, in Oregon, the campfire ban can start pretty early in the year. During the campfire ban months, I tend to camp at higher elevation, and it may be hot and dry during the day, but it can be really cold at night. And it's really kind of a bummer to sit around camp, and it's cold, and you can't have a campfire. So I've been wanting, actually for a few years, to get into a propane fire pit. I mostly wanted something that was as small as possible, so I, so I could tuck it away someplace in the truck. So here's a quick look at what I found. I'm Katie. Um, we're here with the Ignic. We have all the different fire cans out here for display. We've got our brand new one here, but I'll tell you about our original first. So this is the original fire can. Super easy to use with the propane tank. Right now I've got it on the 20, but we also have a 5 and 10 gallon. So super compact. The legs fold up like this, so it stores nice and tight. You squish your handle down. Um, this is the new model, so it has an aluminum lid, so it's a little bit lighter weight, higher BTUs, bigger flame, warmer fire, um, just a little bit more dialed in of a design. We've got the regulator on the, oh, this side <laughs> over here, <laughs> um, and the input on this end rather than on the long side like that one. Um, and then this is the dual purpose grill mode. So this actually has a little grill basket that comes out. Um, so without the grill basket in it, it works just like these two as just a fire can. And then when you're ready, you switch your propane to the other side, slide that in. You've got room for a couple burgers or dogs. So yeah. this one is $1.99, this one is $2.50 and $2.99. There are retailers here selling them at the show. Um, Trail Recon is one just around the corner. There's another one down this way. Um, but we're just here displaying. So if you go to ignic.com, they're all on the website. Now the Ignic, she wasn't selling them right there in that booth. She had the display there and they weren't far from the Asphere booth. So I kept seeing them and so uh, I knew I wanted to go take a look at those. But those same fire pits were for sale by numerous vendors at Expo PNW. I also stumbled across this guy. My name is Devin with uh, Tactical Fire Pits. So what we sell is uh, portable propane fire pits inside of an ammo can. So we use real repurposed military surplus ammo cans. We strip down all the original paint, clean them out. We make the burners. Um, all of this is done by hand in our little shop in San Diego. It's just my wife and I kind of cranking all of these out. Uh, so we offer three different sizes. Our most popular size is our middle size, what we call our OG. Uh, this is going to be a standard 50 cal can. It comes with two pounds of lava rocks and a four foot hose with a 20 PSI regulator. Uh, the next size down we're gonna use, is going to be a 30 cal can or a 7.62 can. It's only three inches wide, super compact, only weighs six pounds. Uh, no lava rocks in here, but it does include that same four foot hose. And then our biggest size is what we call the El Capitan. It's a fat 50 can or 5.56 and offers a double burner design with the same four foot hose. These two smaller ones with a single burner on a comfortable flame setting is only gonna uh, use about a pound of propane an hour. So if you think about a five pound tank as being a day trip and a 20 pound tank being kind of a weekend of camping. Uh, we offer a couple different color options and we also do coolers as well, which we say, you know, not a mythical snow monster, but definitely better than warm beer. So for the smaller one, we're starting at 
Uh, for our most popular size, the OG, we're at 130 and then $180 for the LCAP. Our coolers are uh, $65, and then we're also offering a bundle option for uh, the show here, and something we're going to start launching on the website once we get back home to San Diego. Uh, we're calling it the Overlanders Bundle. So it's going to include a bag with the Velcro side so you can put all your patches on. We'll have a grill grate that packs away inside and fits right over top of our OG model. And also includes a lighter and a bottle opener to keep everything nice and compact and easy to carry. Um, and you got that for 165 here today. Gotcha. You've got your own ammo can. We off it's basically the same internals that uh, for our two smaller pits, just no lava rocks, but same burner, same hose, and all the fittings. 50 bucks, uh, all the work's done for you in there. All you got to have is your own ammo can and a way to punch a hole for a half-inch pipe to go through. So I really like these little fire pits. I also like that they're actually repurposed, real, genuine ammo cans. I mean, I don't quite understand why these cans are so well built. The military can't just like put more ammunition back into them and send them back out. I don't know, maybe they do. And then maybe they retire them after a while. I don't know. If you know, tell me. Anyway, I was also intrigued by the idea of the DIY kit that they offered. Can I build your own? But for the money, the one that was already built in a tiny little can was just, uh, I really liked it and I actually bought it. So small and tidy, I can slip that in just about any place in the truck. And I'm really looking forward to using that this summer. One of the finds that I made that I'm really super excited about was actually at the booth of the Tailgate and Go Company. Now, I filmed a little tiny blurb of, wasn't even a blurb, I just got some shots of their chuck box thing that they sell when I was at Expo uh, Flagstaff two years ago. That's a big, fancy, expensive chuck box and is, you know, definitely doesn't fit in my budget, but I just love these. Well, just watch this. Hi, I'm Taylor with Tailgate & Go, and we have our new product, RV Rail. And RV Rail is compatible with all of our attachments from grills, griddles, sinks, stoves, cutting boards. And we sell it in 12 inches all the way up to 60. So if you want to outfit the side of a teardrop, a trailer, your vehicle, there's multiple options. We powder coat in any uh, color. Check out our setup over here. We've got it running off the rail and then it corresponds to our box on the swing out. We sell them in 12 inch, 24, 36. As far as like weight capacity. Weight capacity? I mean, we- It probably depends the, on the mount, how it's mounted, right? Yes, how it's mounted. Uh, we riveted onto um, our truck mm -hmm. and we are hanging off a 48 pound Blackstone. So it really just depends on what you're mounting with. And I mean, you can mount with anything. It's just a nice flush rail. As long as you have a flush surface, we're 100% made in Colorado. So we have a piece of our RV rail that we're testing out with our suction cup system. Just because if you wanna put a very temporary kitchen on the side of your vehicle, side of your Jeep, and you don't want to drill holes in the side of your you know, nice paint job, then we also offer that. So I just think these little rails have a ton of potential for some DIY solutions. I'm looking for some ways to mount some things. I know they've designed these to accommodate their attachments that they've made to go on the sides of their chuck box. I'm not so interested in the attachments, but I'm interested in the quick, easy way that those mount and also just how slim those are. I've got a few ideas for how I'm gonna use those things. And so you will definitely be seeing that on the channel. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it's worth experimenting with. And if it doesn't work the way that I'm visualizing, I'm certain I can use it for something else. I also spent a little time talking to uh, Geo of Grail Water Purification, and uh, I'll let you take a look at that while I run into the store. Hey there, this is Geo from Grail. We're a Seattle-based uh, Washington brand that makes portable purifiers and filters. Um, sold through REI, Grail.com, Amazon channels, a lot of outdoor retail stores. Uh, but basically we make a bottle uh, that you separate. You can fill up with dirty water. So say you're camping, hiking, backpacking, hunting, fishing, anywhere you're around fresh water around the globe, we got you covered. Fill it up. 
crack the top a little bit. We got our filter cartridge right there. And then just with your body weight. So not, you don't have to force it down. You just kind of let it do its thing. And what it's doing is pushing water right through that filter cartridge or purifier. Activated carbon, so better taste, smell. Um, removing viruses, hepatitis. Uh, and now up to 97% uh, effective with PFAS, so forever chemicals. Uh, so we have users that just use this at home or traveling to hotels and hostels. At that point, crack it open, drink it. The GeoPress uh, is our best seller. It's 24 ounce capacity, different colorways for that. We have the Ultra Press, a little bit more cup holder friendly, uh, backpack uh, pocket, 16.9. And then for this year, we came out with a titanium version. Uh, so same idea, scoop it, press it, drink it, but now you can actually put this in the fire and boil water. It's got handles on it, so you can scoop it, or let's say there's a little ice, get that water through there. And then we added a spot for a paracord. So now you're on a bridge, lower it down, press it. The other really cool thing is we're the only brand that now came out with a one-way valve for the cartridge. So that allows you still to scoop, press, drink, but now you can add a Scratch Lab or your favorite drink mix right inside the bottle and it's not gonna damage the cartridge. So we teamed up with our buddies Pathfinder, Dave Canterbury, uh, which is uh, one of the biggest survival schools uh, out of Ohio, which is where I'm from. Um, but basically what we came out with is a small titanium stove that you can then put your titanium on and boil water while you're on the move for your uh, camp meals or to make a coffee or just some hot water or tea before you go to bed. Starting with the uh, Ultra Press, we're looking at uh, $89.95. Uh, the Geo Press is $99.95. And then the new uh, titanium is $199.95. That's kind of a nifty little system. I like that, you know, you just need this one little cup that, uh, you know, you could use in a survival situation. I could see how I could just easily just stash that away in the truck someplace. Probably wouldn't need it most of the time, but would be nice to have if the situation came up. After I was done looking at the 270 awning by Overland Kings, he wanted to also show me their new electric awning that they're developing. They don't quite have this to market yet, but they're very, very close. And uh, so I went ahead and took a look at it. It's interesting, it's true. It's very, very, very simple to use. Now it doesn't offer the kind of coverage that I need on the side and back of my truck. You know, let me take a quick look at it. This is our brand new uh, electric uh, Overland awning that we're offering here at OBK. Uh, it's a standard 79 inch awning uh, So yeah, this all this all collapses into uh, to the housing. It does have built-in legs Which I'm gonna show you once I redeploy it, uh, but it's completely freestanding. This is a waterproof ripstop canvas So it's uh, you guys are able to, to keep it outside while it's raining the wind we, We've rated it up to, to 25 miles on out right now at, at the moment It probably could go f uh, faster or higher winds, but we just haven't ran into higher winds yet, but 25 is what we've had it up to and not, not a problem with it freestanding. So uh, if it does get rowdier, you can put the legs down and it's gonna be, it's not gonna have a problem out there. So um, yeah, it's uh, like I said, so it, it is electric, but we do also have a built-in uh, manual um, option. So, you know, in the case, I know that some reservations people have on the electric side is, hey, what if it fails? What if the motor gives out while I'm out? Uh, we do have the ability to deploy it manually if in that case you have it out it's something were to happen where it malfunction um, but we've been testing this for for a couple for about five, four or five months now uh, and we haven't run into any problems with it um, so far but we're still testing it we're gonna have our first batch here in the next the next couple weeks so um, yeah pretty cool freestanding do we know roughly what the price is gonna be this the, the price is gonna be at 950 this is our prototype uh, awning right now. So I'll show you, I'll show you the legs on it. These are collapsible, able to put these back in. Like I said, you don't have to use these if you don't want to. With the pole design awning that I had, it was like the last thing I wanted to, to put away. I never used it for that, that reason, you know, cause I just didn't want to put it away. It just took too much time. So, uh, you know, as far as time goes, uh, this is kind of like that bougie item that, that wow factor, you know, like you get to have like an electric awning. 
So also in the category of awnings that won't work for me, but that someone may find interesting, was this thing. These are the Airhaven awnings. This is, uh, I brought this to market one year ago. This particular awning is 100% inflatable. All it takes is a stand-up paddle pump or any type of high volume pump. It takes eight PSI. When it's packed down into its bag, it's about the size of a 12 pack. Size of a 12 pack and weighs only seven pounds. Once it pumps up, it deploys with flat hooks onto car doors, or we can use our flex mounts. Flex mounts will go onto any type of vehicle and I can use one of the particular mounting points to be able to grab onto it and deploy it on a vehicle. The reason why I came up with this awning is really because of the wind. Uh, most awnings in wind, when the wind comes up, you have to take them down or you're gonna probably, probably have some sort of accident. So this particular awning is wind resistant. It can get hit, beat up, and it's gonna pop back into place and there's nothing to break. It's completely air pressure. So it's inflate and deploy and then deflate and stow in your bag for another day. And then also when I was at the 23-0 booth looking at their 270 degree awning, Justin the Wayward Aussie. Justin the Wayward Aussie. Wanted to show me this other product they're selling. While you're looking at awnings, uh, a lot of the time you've got this huge awning on the side of your truck and you don't know what to do with it when you're not using it. You don't want to drive around with it all the time. You've got a thousand dollars getting roasted in the sun. So how do you pull it off? Normally you would get spanners and tools and you'd undo it. We're going to show you something that makes it work that easy. So there's our warning. I mean, that's not the full size one, but it's the same backing plate. This is a 180 compact and we can drop that on and off. So you've seen it work. Now I'm going to show you a little bit on how it works. So this is an Australian made product, which I love selling Australian made stuff. And this is a Rax Brax. Um, this is called the XD. So the XD means that it's got a bigger backing plate to fit those bigger awnings. And what it does, it allows us to pull that pin. So we're gonna, firstly we need to unlock it, pull the pin, that's the safety catch. And then the awning is attached to this part and that just lifts up and pulls off as you saw with that one. And then in the box is a blanking plate that makes that look nice and neat when you're riding down the road. So there's your awning goes back on, nice and easy. Pull the key out and that is more secure because you can't get to the bolt. So it's more secure than it is sitting on your truck now. Um, this will work for 230 awnings, obviously. Uh, it'll also work with a Rhino Rack awning, it'll work with an OVS awning, it'll work with an handicap awning. It'll work with just about all the brands out there. It just depends on the whole center. So if you've got a 270 awning or a 180 awning and you want to take it off, um, and I'm going to give you one more little secret, where do you put it? Where do you put it when you get it home? So you get a second set of these, you mount those onto the garage wall, hang it up on the shed. That keeps it safe as well. So if you're looking for a solution to remove your awning without tools, check out Rack Sprays. This is a polymer, a polymer material. Yep, so it's actually nylon polymer. So there's fiber inside there. And again, this is actually made in Australia. <laughs> yeah, that's something that I probably wouldn't install on my truck. I'm perfectly happy to just leave the awning on there. That's one less thing I need to worry about, you know, putting on there and taking back off of there before and after a trip. But for anyone who uses their rig, you know, both for camping and not for camping and maybe doesn't want that big bulky thing on there. I mean, I could see the practicality and it's true. It makes it really, really easy to take that on and off. If you watched my videos from Overland Expo PNW last year, you may remember seeing this self-contained kitchen box by the guys at Kraft Auto Works. I thought it was a useful and clever solution for people who don't want to have a permanent build out in their truck. The big sort of complaint that everybody had about it was that it was expensive and it's true. It was expensive. It was definitely, you know, not sort of my target audience. I felt kind of bad for even having shared their product on my channel and got so many negative comments about it just because of the price. And I've talked to them on and off um, over the past year and they've been, they were super good natured about it. They totally understood. Um, they did tell me that they were working to bring the price down. And so I did want to find them this year and take a look at the kitchen box again and uh, give them a chance to sort of talk to you guys about some things that they've changed and how they brought the price down. 
Hey folks, Chase here with Craft Auto Works, one of the owners here and a designer of this kitchen. Um, so you guys might have seen this last year at Overland Expo, and uh, we've made a couple little updates to it. Uh, we've got a couple of a set of things, like some uh, new black piping. We've got uh, offers now of two different cooktops. We've got a butane propane, uh, a little bit larger one, and then we still have the mini butane here for a more compact setup. We also switched over to the uh, Scepter Jerry Can. Uh, this has been a, a nice little upgrade. A lot of people like these kind of military style jugs a bit more, and uh, it's been a great fit for our system. Uh, overall though, everything else has pretty much stayed the same though, in terms of the integrated water pump, extra storage down below, comes completely stocked all the GSI cookware. So you can basically just roll into camp, plug in, you got running water uh, in seconds, and you get to cooking. Uh, we've also done a lot of work in really kind of getting the production on these guys streamlined. So the cost has come down a ton. Uh, so the retail on these units is now $13.45, and uh, occasionally you can catch it at events like this on sale for another $100 off. So obviously that's still not, you know, a budget item, but, you know, I can see how for certain markets, you know, that is something that some people would be interested in. He also told me about their other product, which he says they actually sell a lot more of, which is this, um, Overland electrical system that they've built. Um, I'll just let him tell you about it. Uh, we have here is our Overland electrical system. Uh, so this is basically a pre-built lithium dual battery system designed for vehicle integration. So unlike a lot of other products on the market that uh, you know are really kind of designed originally for home backup power, emergency power outages, things like that, we wanted to develop a system that was specifically for vehicle off-road Overland style use. So a couple things that we did to make that happen. First of all, built into a Front Runner Wolf pack case. So it'll integrate with a lot of people's standard gear loadout, and that way it just kind of clicks in, and you know it's a nice standardized case, also nice uh, weather protection, rugged, can take a beating. Getting inside the unit, we've got a few things that really set this apart from other products. Uh, the main one is fast vehicle charging. So a lot of those other you know 1500-ish style units, you plug those into a cigarette outlet when you're driving, best case you're getting about 100 watts, you're probably looking at about a 15 hour plus charge time if you run it down. Our system can charge at over 400 watts. So that does uh, require just a quick little installation of a uh, line coming from your starter battery. But once that's in, um, our unit has automatic vehicle detect. It knows when the engine's running, only pulls power when it is, so it'll never kill your starter battery. With the same capacity battery, you're going to charge this thing in about three to four hours versus the competitors about four, you know four to five times uh, the amount of charge time. So as long as you're driving, you know an hour or two a day typically, most people find that all of their power needs have pretty much disappeared in terms of being able to, you know, run fridges, lights, water pumps, things like that, and just not even have to worry about it anymore. We also use a lithium iron phosphate battery uh, versus a lot of the competitors that use lithium ion. So their uh, battery cells are good for about 400 cycles before they're gonna start uh, having some issues. Ours are good for over 4,000 cycles and will still have 80% capacity. Ours also have an integrated self-heating system. Their system is shut down below freezing and you certainly can't charge them below freezing. Our system can operate uh, for output down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. And if it detects that it's below freezing and you need to charge it, it just automatically sends power to the integrated heating system, warms up the cells, auto switches back to charging. You don't have to do anything. Last thing is uh, we also really focused on DC power output. So again, most other products on the market, you get maybe a cigarette outlet, one to two USB ports. Uh, our system has 80 amps continuous of DC output. We've got an array of cigarette outlets, uh, double Anderson port here, USB-C and USB-A ports. Um, you can even combine the uh, Anderson ports to do a, con a combined 40 amp output if you wanted to run something like a portable ARB compressor, anything like that. We still have a uh, inverter on board, uh, so you still, still got a 500 volt amps of output there from our Victron inverter. So if you need to run you know, something like a larger uh, drone battery charger, camera batteries, uh, laptop, things like that, you still got the power output for that. Um, also got shore power um, as usual, so that way you can plug this thing in and uh, you know when you're back at a main campsite or back home, no problem there. We got alternator, you know, vehicle charging in via an Anderson. Oh. Solar input via SAE, that way you can't accidentally swap them. 
really, at the end of the day, we just wanted to put together a system that was actually meant for this market and is going to work with your vehicle and work with your power needs, for especially, especially people that have really high power needs out on the trail. Yeah, so we actually priced this thing at the exact same price as most of our competitors for this size product, which is 1995. If you got any questions, feel free to reach out to us at craftautoworks.com and I'll be happy to help. Now that's also not cheap, but it is comparably priced to um, many power stations and uh, in many ways it offers a lot more functionality um, to start with just all the different plugs that it has. It's nifty that it's built into a front runner box that you know can stack up with the same boxes that many other people already use. And me personally, I there's no way I would ever go and buy all those components and build something like that myself. Certainly, it's something that if you're comfortable with it, you can DIY, you can buy all the parts. I suspect that the buying all those parts, including the batteries that they've got in there, would total up to pretty much very close to what they're charging for it. But you know, add on top of that the countless hours of research trying to figure out what you need, um, how to do it, how to make sure you do it right, hopefully not make any mistakes. All right, so between the awnings and the stuff you've just looked at just now, that is all of the product stuff that uh, I'm gonna bring you from Expo. I do have a few other things that I shot during Expo week, um, including a, an interesting little segment that I filmed with uh, Alan from Yankum Ropes and Casey Liddell, and then I'll be looking at some of the adventures I had before and after Expo PNW Northwest. I hope some of this may have been helpful or interesting in some way. Thank you for watching.